Welcome to part three, the final chapter of the Rules Lawyer Trilogy, my guide to Foundry Virtual Tabletop. In part one, I covered the basics, including a lot of modules that I like that give you basic functionality to help run Pathfinder and Foundry. And in part two, I focused on three particular modules that had a lot of options within them that I thought would be useful to you. And now in this one, I'm going to talk about glowing up your Foundry installation and dazzling your players with visual and aural delights. Let's get into it. All right, so this is basically where I left off in the last video, but I turned off all of the graphical enhancements from modules that I had. This is what the Foundry interface looks like by default, but you can change this with the PF2E Pathfinder UI module. So I will turn it on. And now we have this interface, which has a distinct pathfinder -y color scheme. We can also fine tune the appearance of a lot of things in the interface. You can change the color scheme of character sheets and the party sheet. You can make them look like this, for example. There's a lot of other things you can tweak, but it automatically replaces the little dropdown in chat that lets you choose whether a role is public or private. It replaces that with these cool buttons. And also, this is how a lot of conditions on a single token looks like by default, which is kind of fugly. In Pathfinder, this can happen a lot, and it's especially problematic for tiny tokens. This is the module that has them laid out in a nice ring around the token. This is also the module that color codes which actors are enemies and which are friends. Next, this is what it normally looks like when you attack a creature in Foundry. It just produces the result in chat, which is incredibly boring. We all like animated dice in our VTTs, or at least most of us. The go-to module for this is called Dice So Nice! Exclamation point. Now with the mod turned on, we get a proper virtual animation of die roll. There's a lot of settings here to make simultaneous rolls possible. You can speed up how quickly the dice roll. This one I like. I like to disable it for initiative rolls, because if I have a lot of creatures who are lying in wait to ambush the party, I don't want the party to see all of my dice rolls. This one is a your mileage may vary situation. Some people want the chat message to appear immediately, but for others, that eliminates the suspense of watching the die together. By the way, everyone sees the same animation. It does slow down play slightly, especially when you're running simple monsters that are attacking three times. But the best part of Dice So Nice is that everyone gets to customize their own dice set. There's a lot of preset themes that the module comes with. Here's a rainbow set. There's a lot of ways you can customize them. You can change the texture, the material, and the font. Here I will make them look like bird eggs. The styles range from simple, like black, to strange and fantastical, like uh, prism. You can even customize individual dice and change the settings of that if you want to. I'll make my d12 red. There's a lot of other individual settings that I will not go over. You can explore them yourselves. Here, under special effects, you get to have special animations happen on certain results. So this is how I make my nat 1s and nat 20s do something special. So you see on my screen I have d20s that roll a 1 produce two different effects. They produce the epic fail sound and also create an animation of breaking glass. Whereas my nat 20s make an epic wind sound and do a little particle effect. You can actually make dice produce specific results here under the course settings I discovered. Instead of rolling randomly, you can manually input a die roll. So here's my nat 1. And here's my natural 20. Pretty! When I was game mastering for my middle school kids, this animation was very popular. That one is called Animation Thormund TTE, or the Tank Engine. The next module is if you don't like this encounter tracker as is, if you like what you find in a lot of video games, including Baldur's Gate 3, having everyone in initiative in a row at the top of the screen. For that, I use Carousel Combat Tracker. Here, you get to do many of the same things you can with the encounter tracker, it's just more visually pleasing. It is very customizable, by the way. I like to hide defeated enemies, and I check that box. 
Oh, and here's another setting that I just discovered. You can hide an enemy until its first turn. I'm guessing this operates independently from Monk's combat mod. But here you can adjust the size of the combat carousel. I'm going to make it triple X large. Oh, probably too big for most games, but perfect for this video. Here we have the same functionality as our Foundry combat tracker. You can change the settings right here with this gear. All of their conditions are displayed on them. We get to see if they're friend or foe. Uh, this pop-up with describing the character and all of their conditions, you can hide that if you want under the settings. In fact, I will do that now by changing show descriptions to none. Now it's uh, much more manageable. You can advance to the next turn with this little right arrow, like so. By the way, the Keybind Menagerie module from part one lets you add a hotkey to end the current turn, which I think is very useful. I'm going to make one right now. The next mod I'll show is called Combat Booster. The full title is Combat Booster, Turn Marker, Recent Actions, and more. The main reason I like this mod is it creates a turn marker for the current actor. Everyone gets to see who's up. Under its settings, you can also create a next turn marker so that there is a lighter circle circling around whoever is next. You also get a start turn marker where you get this very unmistakable X in your origin square where your turn started. We also see some quality of life improvements that are in some of the other modules we've already seen. The recent actions part is only for D&D 5e, not for Pathfinder at the time of this video. The next module is Effects Master. This adds a new button on the left-hand side for effect controls. Here there's a bunch of special effects you can add to the map, like so. There's a red fire cone. Here's a cool fireball. Whoosh. And you can customize these effects. Then we have particle effects here on the left-hand side, which lets you add a lot of interesting things to the map, shall we say. We can have bats flying on the map. So here are our bats on the screen. And let's add fog. Let's make it look like we're in Barovia. So there's our fog effect. And all of these are customizable as well. We're gonna change the, our effect to rain and see what that looks like. So here's the rain. It may be hard to see on your device, but I'll make the rain bigger for you. There you go. <laughs> You can also make it look like there's a fire going on, and now we see embers scattered over the map. Or we can replace it with little twinkling lights. Or we can replace it with bubbles, what the hell. Bubbles and bats, oh my. There are also filter effects. This way we can have periodic lightning flashes. There's other weird effects, as you can see. Here's the predator effect. And here's one that I'm going to use in the future called underwater. Everything is distorted, slightly. I'm going to make it more obvious for people. There you go. So let's say you want to have a heavy storm. So we're going to combine the rain effect with the flashes of lightning. The next one is great. It's called Token Magic Effects. Once it's installed, you can find these new compendia under Compendium Packs. You'll see Token Magic Book of Fire and Token Magic Portfolio. Book of Fire is just a subset of things in the portfolio that are related to fire. The portfolio has everything in the Book of Fire. But these, you can just drag them straight to your hotkey bar. So let's add this fire one. And whenever you have a token selected, let's say this goblin has been set on fire, I click the hotkey and it's now on fire. And there's a lot of different animations, really cool ones. Here's one called Evade Stance, which uh, makes it look like he's trying to evade. To remove all of these effects, you'll want the very first effect called Delete Filters to be its own hotkey so that you can uh, remove them with a press of a button. You can access all of these effects in the macros directory, which is on the bottom left corner of the hotkey bar right here, this little folder here. There are some really weird ones. Here's the Moo Moo Man dance. And there's a search bar here, so you can find things like mirror images. Here's uh, the mirror images effect on our wizard. Very cool. As you can see, there's a lot of wild ones. Now many of you are probably wondering, how do I get those cool animations when someone swings a sword? Well, first, you want to have automated animations. This is the core module that allows Foundry to associate certain events with 
animations and sound effects. Then we need graphical and sound assets, and that's what JB2A is for. Now, there is a free version of this module that has a more limited set of things. I have the complete collection, and that's because I support their Patreon, and I'll include a link in the description. And at the time of this video, it is a few dollars a month, and I think it's worth it. And then finally, you want to teach Foundry to know what animations go with what events. And that is accomplished with the module PF2E Animation Macros. So I check that, and I reload. So now when Valoros swings his sword against the dragon, we get to see and hear it. That was a miss. So let's aim at the goblin instead, which, um, yep, that's a critical hit sound, which I expected against a lower level creature. That becomes a sound your players will dread when they fight a boss monster. A number of spells are animated. Just make sure to target what you're attacking with a spell. So our wizard's going to cast Electric Arc, and we should be able to see that when I roll damage. Also, here is the ignition spell, formerly called Produce Flame. It has that uh, sound effect. Ooh, and those cool eyes. A lot of conditions become animated. This is what Frightened looks like. And so on to some other modules. And this next one is called Boss Bar. And it's exactly what you're thinking. Basically, this new button appears on the left. It's a toggle. And you want to select a token. And wherever your players are on the map, when you toggle it, it zooms everyone in on the monster and uh, displays a big uh, health bar. And whenever people do damage to it, Let's say our fighter deals this damage. Everyone gets to see the boss bar's health go down. Now, I said in another video I'd like to keep health bars hidden from my players, but come on, it's a boss. This is cool. To make it run this way, you want to check pan camera to boss, and also I like to have the health bar at the bottom because the top is usually occupied by other things from my other mods. Next is splatter, and this leaves blood on the battlefield when someone gets wounded. So when our dragon does a critical hit on our fighter here, here's a 30 damage, it leaves a big blood splatter that um, <laughs> on the screen. To clean the blood off the battlefield, just click this button here on the left to clear it. Next is to add music. There are basically free sound sets out there with musical tracks, and I'm gonna list the ones that I use that I know of that are free. There is Ivan Dutch's Music Packs, Tabletop RPG Music, and Michael Gelfi Studio's Audio Pack. And all of them, I believe, you can get more sound sets if you support their Patreon. Basically, when you install one of these music mods, you will find a compendium with their music tracks. You can search for it in Compendium Packs, and then right-click the folder and you'll want to import all content and that makes it available to you under the playlists button. So here is Ivan Dutch's playlists and all of their playlists. Related, if you use Sirenscape, which I have a subscription to, they're the official partners with Paizo that create soundscapes, not just musical themes, but also sound environments, then there's a module that allows you to funnel your Sirenscape audio into Foundry. Now, it has worked for me sometimes, not all the time, so it comes with that caveat. But the module itself is free, and it's called Sirenscape Control. And once it's activated in Foundry, you'll want to go under its settings, and then uh, copy the, your authorization token from your Sirenscape online control panel. I paste it here, save changes, and now under my playlists button, I see this button to import sound sets. Now I'm going to want to have another browser window open to my Sirenscape dashboard and get the player going. And once I'm here, I can type in anything that I have access to in Sirenscape. So here I want to have the dragon battle. I click here, I can import the playlist with this button, and now I'm able to access it and I can play it. Okay. So I'll have that playing for the rest of the video. The next module is a premium module put out by Paizo called Pathfinder Token Pack Bestiaries. In Foundry, you can find all of the stat blocks of all monsters that Paizo has ever released. It's free as part of Foundry, or more specifically, the Pathfinder module for Foundry. 
but this module gives you all the artwork and associates them with their stat blocks. And they're not just cut and paste. As you can see, they put effort to make these uh, tokens pop. So you can type in anything, let's say the Hydra, and find that the monster now has a corresponding token. Here we go. There's a particularly cool high level one called the Elder Worm Wraith, which I'm gonna put on the map. As you can see, that is really cool. Now for a couple of modules that are not necessarily graphical. I just thought they were, they didn't belong in the first video because they're kind of extra. First is this module called Break Time. So whenever you need to take a break and tell your players, okay, we'll be back in 15 minutes, there's this button in the bottom left that you can click. And it creates an interface. It would list all the players who are part of your session. Clearly, I don't have any players right now. And they can all indicate when they are gone and when they return. You can set a time limit. And regardless, it will tell you when the break started. So this is just a nice way to formalize a break. And also, if people have their cameras off, they can indicate their back with this tool. The last thing is called Dice Stats. And uh, if you ever GM a while, you'll definitely see players complaining that they have bad streaks of luck. Well, Dice Stats records the player's roles and also the GM's roles for statistical analysis. So it creates this button here on the left that looks like a D20. You click it. And I actually can't demonstrate what it does because I don't have players logged in at the moment, but it could be fun to point to a graph or to the statistics and show that yes, you have had shitty luck or the GM has had great luck. Or you can prove that they subjectively think they're having bad luck when they actually aren't. Thus concludeth my trilogy, the Rules Lawyer Guide to Foundry Virtual Tabletop. If you like it, definitely Give it a thumbs up and subscribe in appreciation and also support my Patreon. Also on my Discord, you can find my list of current modules for Foundry that I try to keep up to date as much as possible. Once you join, look for the channel titled VTT Advice. It is the pinned comment. But you already want to join my Discord because we have a great community there where we talk about Pathfinder and other games. And you can play Pathfinder 2E there in our drop-in, drop-out, organized play system called Endless Tale Tavern. So that's it. This was a lot of work. I hope it was helpful. I've been Ronald, the Rules Lawyer. I'll see you next time.